Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, so we continue talking about a different formulation of Newtonian mechanics. Uh, I'm talking about Lagrangian and uh, Hamiltonian. But before that, we are repeating the Newtonian approach um, on a little bit more formalized, so to speak, uh, level. The first introduction was obviously done in the course um, Physics for Teens on Unizor.com. Now, this is Physics Plus, which is basically I'm trying to repeat the same concepts of Newtonian mechanics. Um, introduced in the Physics for Teens course, but on a little bit more formalized level. So I recommend you to watch this lecture from the Unizor.com. So you go to Physics Plus course, and this is the uh, part which is uh, dedicated to Newtonian mechanics. And this is one of the lectures uh, called Field and Potential. I think this is the second um, lecture in the Newtonian part of the Physics Plus. Now, um, watching the lecture from the Unizor.com has certain benefits. Well, number one, obviously everything is totally free, there are no advertisements. Number two, every lecture has its textual description, so to speak, notes part. It's like a textbook, basically. Um, so, there are certain, maybe, calculations made a little bit more detailed in uh, the textbook than I'm doing on the uh, on the board. So basically you listen uh, and watch the lecture and then uh, you can read the same basically material uh, in the textbook part which is on the same screen. You have the video and you have the textual part of the same material. Okay, so today we will talk about field and potential. Now um, the concept of a field actually will be introduced on an abstract level, but obviously the prototype is a gravitational field, known to people for thousands of years. So, <coughs> um, let's assume that we have a um, certain point in our three-dimensional space and uh, let's assume that this is a material point which which means it has certain mass unit mass actually if we will go to a prototype of gravitational field and it's moving which means every coordinate is a function of time okay now let's assume further that um, wherever it moves there is a certain field there is a certain force I would say rather uh, where um, this force obviously depends on the point where exactly this point is so the force is also dependent of uh, position so, we are assuming that we have certain area in space where this point is moving according to this particular uh, coordinate. So, that's the coordinates of this point. And at each point of this area where the point is moving, at each point there is a vector which we can call the vector of force, which is defined at any point of this area. Well, first of all, terminology-wise, the area where this point is moving, where at each point there is some kind of a vector, uh, vector which we call vector of force, uh, this is called the field. So the field is an area. Now, the force is very often is called for, uh, field intensity. So there is a field, which is an area, and field intensity, which is the force. Now, here I have to make a note that in some um, textbooks, whatever, uh, or lectures of certain people, they prefer to basically identify field with field intensity, and they 
just use them interchangeably. I prefer, I think it's a little bit misleading, and I prefer field to be an area as basically corresponds to the meaning of the word field, and field intensity to be the force. So if you will uh, meet somewhere that the word field means actually the field intensity and the force, well, deal with this. But basically I prefer to separate these things. Now, what's very, very important, and this is the part of the definition of the field, that there is also at any point um, scalar function Scalar function is basically a real real function of three arguments, which for any value of these three arguments takes some function value. And and this is basically a definition of the field. Field is equal to minus nabla u. Now let me explain what it is. Well, nabla um, it was introduced uh, before in um, other parts of the uh, unizor.com in physics for genes. However, let me just explain that nabla is just a, a vector which is vector of I should probably put back to name. It's a vector. Nabla, nabla u, I mean, obviously. So u is a scalar function, but if you will take partial derivatives by three arguments, it becomes three values, which is basically a uh, vector. It's a it's a three values, which is three vector. Now u is still function of x, y, and z, obviously. So I don't put it in parentheses, but you assume that u is function of x, y, and z, of point inside the field. So if you have this particular um, equation between the force and some function some scalar function, um, uh, which we call u, and we call this function a potential, then it's a field, basically. That's the definition of the field. So let me just repeat again. Field is an area where at each point you have certain vector, which we call factor of force. At each point is um, defined a scalar function which is called a potential and the value of the vector is equal to negative uh, nabla potential which is negative this particular vector. This is a vector and this is a vector. So that's the definition of the field. Now obviously the word potential it actually is related to potential energy of gravitational field where is where if we're talking about prototype but that's basically a s more abstract so to speak definition so you have a three-dimensional area you have the force at each point well the vector and you have a scalar function which is a potential and there is this type of um, relationship between them now again back to um, uh, gravitational field, you have the force, uh, which is basically the gravitational force, and uh, you have obviously the potential energy, and they are related exactly like this. But this is something which we were talking about in the previous course, the prerequisite uh, physics for chance. But right now we're talking about the uh, pure abstract. So there is a force, there is a function, a scalar function, and that's a relationship. And now from here, I will derive the most important property of the field. And the most important property of the field is basically that the work 
which this force performs on a moving along some trajectory object is independent on the trajectory. It depends only the beginning and the end point. So no matter how um, the uh, material point moves from point A to point B, no matter what the trajectory between these two points, the work will be the same. And that, let's just uh, prove this type of thing. So this is my point, which is moving. And uh, as I was saying, it moves from point A to point B during the time from T1 to T2. Now at each point on the trajectory, now this is trajectory, so this is trajectory. X, Y, and Z depend on the time. Now um, at each point uh, there is this type of a function and since my position of the point depends on the time, that's why I put T inside this particular thing. So f becomes actually a function of t, of time, because the position is the function of time. So if I will write just plain f of x, y, and z, and x, y, and z in turn depend on the time, so that would be this particular thing. Same thing actually with u. I mean, I can definitely say exactly the same thing. u is depends on uh, position, but position depends on time. So that's how u becomes dependent on uh, the time. Now let's talk about work. What is work? As you remember, and that's basically from the previous lecture, work is integral from t1 to t2 function um, uh, vector f which depends on the time, like this. So I'll put just time here, but basically I mean f of x of t, y of t, and z of t. A scalar product to radius vector to the point which defines basically a trajectory. That was a definition of work done by the force. Um, uh, along a trajectory defined by this um, vector r of t. So, obviously, differential means a small piece of the trajectory, and vector means a vector, so if you will scale, uh, multiply, multiply them as a scalar product of two vectors, you will have an infinitesimal piece of work, which is defined here, and then you integrate it, and then you get the entire work along the whole trajectory. Now, what is R of t? Basically, it's vector OP of t, right? That's a, that, that's a radius vector which defines the point. So, it, that, that's, a that's a vector now, it becomes. I mean, it should be here. Here. Okay. All right. Fine, so let's just do this type of thing and see what happens. In case our vector of force depends on the potential, this integral becomes the following. So it's uh, so instead of f. I should put minus a uh, vector which is du by dx, du by dy, and du by dz. Now, differential of a uh, vector which goes into position is another vector which is basically dx, dy, and dz, right? Because obviously we are just talking about this vector and thi this vector, we explicitly represented them as um, in, in coordinates. Well, this is a scalar product, which means I have to multiply first by first, plus second by second, plus third by third. 
So what would it be? It would be dx by d, sorry, df du by dx times dx. I don't need two d's. Plus, well, actually, it's all. Uh, uh, let me just forget about this minus for a second. So I have plus du by d. Uh, y times dy plus du by dz times dz. Now, what is this? This is basically a full differential. We are talking about um, x, y, and z, and u all depend on time right now. So, whenever we are talking about this, we actually should specify instead of dx, we can specify dx by dt times dt. What is differential of a function? x of t is a function, differential of a function is derivative times differential of argument. Same thing here and same thing here. So this becomes a full du um, by dy times dy by dt and du by dz times dz by dz. The same thing is here. It becomes uh, the derivative uh, uh, of the function u, and times dt would be basically the whole full differential. So it's actually a full differential of the function du um, on an infinitesimal, uh, which means increment, basically. Uh, infinitesimal increment on the time from from t to t plus dt. Now I'm relatively freely right now using the calculus and vector terminology, etc. I assume this is supposed to be known, and if not, again you can go back to prerequisite course, uh, math for teens and the physics for teens on the same website to basically. Um, review this material, but right now I'm not spending any time on uh, explaining these things. So this is the full differential. So that's what we have here. We have integral from t1 to t2, function u, I mean under integral it will become differential of u as a function of t u is function of x, y, and z, x, y, and z in turn are function of t, so u becomes a function of t, and this is a full differential. Now, if this is the full differential, by the way, I forgot to put minus here, here and here. <coughs> I mean, no, not here, sorry. Here is a k, but here because function f is a minus nabla u, so that's why the minus here. Okay, so that means Integral of differential is the function u from two points t2, now minus in front, so it will be here, minus, minus and minus will be plus, plus u of t1. Or, if you wish, u of t1 minus u of t2. So, as we see, this integral, which is basically work, which is vector f does along a trajectory, so the whole work is actually a difference in potential between the beginning and the end. And that's very, very important, which means it does not depend on the trajectory itself. It becomes actually dependent only at the potential, uh, uh, only from the potential at, uh, and end points, a and b. Okay, so that's basically the end of this proof. And uh, that's, as I was saying, is the very important property of any field where the field force is related to some scalar function called potential. Now, this is very important to introduce um, for uh, further introduction into uh, Lagrangian and uh, Hamiltonian. So the concept of potential is very, very important. Now, the previous lecture 
In the previous lecture, I also introduced basically um, uh, the concept of relationship between work and kinetic energy. Previous lecture of the same, um, uh, it was a recap of uh, Newtonian, Newtonian's law. Now, that means that, so that was the previous lecture, the formula was that the work is an increment of kinetic energy, energy. So if you have some work performed by some force and uh, the result of this is increment of kinetic energy of the object um, which experiencing this, this force. Now from this and this follows this. It's the same work. Now this is work which was just any, uh, any work regardless of the field. But if this is a work of a force which is the force of the field related to potential, then we have this. Or if you can put T1 to the right and U1, U2 to the left or vice versa, whatever, you have U1 plus T1 is equal to U2 plus T2. So potential plus kinetic energy of the object which is moving inside the field is conserved. It's a conservation of energy. So in the beginning and at the end of the trajectory uh, along which this um, uh, our test object is moving, it has potential and it has kinetic energy and no matter how it moves at the very end and basically at any in the intermediate point as well obviously um, the object retains the sum of this potential and kinetic energy now another very important um, property is that if if you at point T2 at the end of the uh, uh, at the journey at the end of trajectory, come back to the same point. So if A, point A is and, and point B are the same, so you go in some kind of a cycle. Well, there is no difference in potential uh, at, at these two points because it's the same point. So this is zero, which means the work is zero. So if object is moving along a closed trajectory where the beginning and the end coincide the total amount of work which force uh, of the field performs on this object is zero because part of the um, uh, trajectory can be against the force and part of the force uh, of the trajectory can be uh, with the force so it will be plus and minus and eventually it will be zero basically so that's what it says along any closed circle. I mean circle, not in terms of circle, but in terms of circular um, trajectory where the beginning and end coincide. So that's basically it. That's all properties I wanted to talk about. Again, this is a little bit more abstract of the uh, abstract presentation of the material which you probably know from regular course, school course. Uh, of um, of the physics, especially gravitational uh, field, when we are uh, 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 studying, but it's very important to go into the abstract level again as introduction into a new kind of view to mechanics introduced by Lagrange and Hamilton. Okay, that's it for today. I recommend you uh, to read the notes for this lecture. It's basically the same material presented in the textbook style. And that's it. Thanks a lot and good luck.